Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Saturday, September 16th, 2017 edition of VR News. Let's dive into today's news. I want to talk VR art tools. Seems like every new art tool that gets released in VR ups the ante in terms of functionality, user friendliness. Well, Masterpiece VR, another example of just that. It's a multi-user, spectator-friendly painting tool. It's got sculpting features as well. Their objective to house everything you could possibly need or want in a single application. And to do that, it's got some pretty impressive features. 20 plus sculpting and painting tools. You can collaborate with up to four other artists. And I love this next one. Fantastic for, tu for tutorials, for example. 20 spectators can look on. Some of those features, tilt brush, medium quill, still can't do to this day. The program also having the ability to view a desktop window while in VR. So not only could you use that for reference images, you could use it for reference video. Say you're following along a tutorial from YouTube, well, you can play that video in its entirety inside. The CEO of Masterpiece VR, Jonathan Gagne, he had this to say to Road to VR. We wanted to push the boundaries by creating an organic 3D modeling tool that is both powerful and easy to learn. VR was the medium to do this in, and it let us take a big step forward in the development of a tool that let people work together in real time to co-create on the same piece or contribute feedback or critique immediately. This next video, you see Mary Ellis, she is from Masterpiece VR, using a couple of the tools that I just talked about and of note, Masterpiece VR is a graduate of a couple of different VR accelerator programs. So it's nice to see those programs bearing some real fruit here in the form of an actual finished application. Now back to the video, you can see Mary has a reference image of a lion. In fact, she's got several, three within the program. And I'm gonna skip ahead here and you can see in a second from those references and her working on it, how that ended up. And it's a pretty damn good job. Now the program supports export to .stl. It's available for Rift and Vive, $30 US. You can pick that up either through Steam VR, the Oculus Store, or Viveport. Next story, STX Surreal. They're the immersive media division of a company called STX Entertainment. They have partnered up with Google's VR team to launch a 360 degree pay per experience app for the Daydream VR platform. What they're trying to do is set themselves apart and their quote is by being highly selective with a true programming voice. Surreal themselves, a cinematic VR company, they produce more than 70 videos with 35 million plus views. They were acquired by STX in August of last year, produced 360 degree videos, usually featuring celebrities, uh, Snoop Dogg, John Hamm, Gordon Ramsay, and a bunch of others. Their ambitious aim as an organization is to become the HBO of virtual reality. It's a pretty lofty, lofty objective, but hey, fair enough. More on this as we're updated moving forward. Next up, type Mecha Mayhem into a search engine and you're likely gonna get back several pages of results for an achievement from a game called Terraria, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Fantastic little game, however, in this story, Mecha Mayhem is a mech-based game. It's currently in beta version 0.102. In an email to VR Focus, the dev stated, we're focused on immersing the player as much as they can so that they can actually feel like they're controlling and piloting a mech rather than pull off the usual first-person shooter or VR hands mechanic. We do that by having the controls be able to physically be grabbed. So everything in the cockpit, movement, gun, steering, all controlled with levers that you can reach out, grab, and move. There's not a lot to go on for this game yet. No real finished videos or anything. It is in beta. Hopefully we find out a little bit more about this. Uh, I would really love to see a project like this come through to fruition. Let's cross our fingers and check up with it in a few weeks or months time. Well guys, that logo right there that's the Atari logo. Many of you 
already know that. Those of you who don't, that's an important logo for video game history. It represents, for me, the Atari 2600, which was the first gaming machine that I wanted badly. It was an obsession and sadly never did ever get one. I played it at friends' houses many times, never had one myself. But this one, guys, this one right here, that logo there, well, that represents my favorite PC of all time, bar none, the Commodore logo, the computer, the Commodore 64, which is still to this day, and you know, it's a little bit of a cheat stat in how computers are now sold mostly as clones, but it's still the best-selling computer of all time. Well, things just got really interesting with the Commodore 64. Another person from that era, Jim underscore 64, he built a device capable of delivering 3D stereoscopic graphics to the 64. And I want to stress, this isn't true VR, it's 3D stereoscopic. And to go along with that, he programmed a game called Street Defender. Now, if you cross your eyes while this is on screen, you can kind of get a poor man's version of what you would see with this device actually on your head because it's not VR, it's 3D stereoscopic. If you cross your eyes, you can get a picture to form of the two sides meeting in the middle of your cross-eyed vision. I take absolutely no responsibility if your eyes stay that way, however, but it will give you an idea of what you're seeing. So while it's far from actual virtual reality, I thought it was a cool story because this is an old computer. Uh, they stopped selling these things commercially in the early 90s, and yet here we are 23 years later, 24 years later, and somebody digs something out of the woodwork and gets a 1 megahertz. Think about that, a 1 megahertz machine with 64K, not all of which was free, Let's say they had about 40 to 50 to actually play with and get that to display 3D stereoscopic. Even if it's not VR, that's still pretty damn cool. Well, guys, that is it for the Saturday edition. As always, cheers.